But look at somebody say, when the devil hurts you, tell God. Man, oh, oh, if you could just grasp this concept. Tell God. Tell God. Now, you got to have rapport with God first. That means you have a relationship where you actually pray and talk to him sometimes. Your emotions should not be ignited and then you run and act a fool every time you get upset. Amen. I let a 15-year-old act like that. But you 40. Amen. It's time to start telling God stuff. Amen. That's what he's here for. When the devil hurts you, tell God. God. How often do you speak to God about the bad things people do to you before you speak to others? Mm, I, I could just take up offering right here. I could take, I mean, it's over. This is it. How often do you speak to God about the bad things people do to you before you speak to others? Because it just takes a split second. Somebody do something, you got the phone in your hand, you don't even know how it got there. You ready to call somebody and get somebody on your side and conjure up an audience because of what somebody did to you. And God is sitting there like, man, I'm never your first choice. Proverbs 29 and 11 says, a fool uttereth all his mind I don't like being around people that tell me everything that's on their mind bye get away from me you're a fool you don't know when to shut up I don't need to know everything you think it. amen husbands your wife don't need to know everything you think it. I just, I'm just honest I'm just a blank sheet of paper I'm just I'm just I'm just Yes, you crazy. <laughs> Amen. Some stuff you ought to tell run by God first. Amen. Amen. And God going to say, tell your homeboy that. Don't tell your wife that. She just don't look good to me no more, God. I think I'll go tell her. And God is like, bye. That's stupid. You don't say that, you stupid. foolishness and then come back well you look good today mm. then you try to pray and God just leave the room <laughs> no no it's too late for that yeah but a fool uttereth all his mind and it aggravates me when people get old like this you know, this is something you do when you're young and mouth off and stuff. But when you get older, there ought to be some reserve to you. Like, there ought to be some class. You can't be ratchet forever. There ought to be some class to you where, you know, somebody say something that don't just... Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can just, you know... Okay, okay. But a fool is going to utter all his mind, tell all his business, everybody else's business, never shut up. But a wise man keepeth it till when? Keepeth it in until afterwards. After what? After it's resolved. After it's... Can I keep preaching in here? The word, I don't even have to ad lib. The word is preaching by itself. Many times situations would never escalate if we took the time to tell the Lord about it before we confront or badmouth a person. Amen. Clap! Before we open our mouth. It could, it could, it would have never escalated. If we took the time to tell the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 27 and 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and does what? I don't want to be a part of this. I know if I, 
if I come back and if I say something and if I try to do this, man, this is going to create a mess that I'm going to have to deal with later. Because that's what prudent means. I'm considering the future of my actions. So certain things I say I can't take back. Certain things I do I can't undo. So you know what? Let me foresee the future that this is going to turn out bad. And let me just hide myself from it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to back off of this. You don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. This is, you don't. But the simple pass on and are punished. You know what simple is? Stupid. The simple. Ain't much to them. Simple. Devil can manipulate them to, to just do whatever. Whenever the devil want them to have a bad day, he give them a bad day. Whenever the devil want to use them to make somebody else's day bad, he uses them. Has full access always. Whenever some mess needs to be started up, the devil got them on in, the, in his favorites. Because they're simple. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. Amen. Don't be getting mad. Just don't be simple. Is he talking about me? If you ask that question, probably. <laughs> Did you know that you can confront a person in your mind without ever speaking to them? Which causes you to carry the same anger and resentment inside? Did you know that? Somebody do something to you, you start playing it in your mind like a video game. What you gonna say when you see them? It's what I'm gonna do. It's what I'm gonna say. Ooh, boy, watch me. I'm a, ooh, and in your mind, you just, ooh, 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 ooh. Body blow, body blow, uppercut, ooh, uppercut, ooh. Bobbing and weaving. Somebody goes, hey, Walter, what, what's wrong? What you doing? Oh, oh nothing. You just sitting there. Mm. <laughs> Ain't no music playing or nothing. What, what are you doing? Mm. Oh, ooh, oh, oh. Mm. Yeah, you just imagining whooping up on something. You, you, you know that sin if you're thinking it. Yeah, you, you don't have to manifest into the physical realm. You done whooped them and killed them. In your mind, you sin. You committed murder in your mind. You know why it's a sin? Because it's going to change your behavior towards them. If you murder them in your mind, they dead to you in real life. And all that is sin. Man, you don't, I ain't preaching for claps today. But you can confront a person in your mind without ever speaking to them. You're not even supposed to do that. You're supposed to bypass all of that and take it to God. Talk to God before you let the devil keep rewinding the tape in your head. Devil got it looping on repeat. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down what? Imaginations and every high thing that does what? Exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you have the knowledge of God, but you didn't go to God. So this that's replaying in your mind is against the knowledge of God. So you got to bring this into captivity and make the thought obey Christ. No, we don't kill our brother. Even though they did something that made me upset, I don't kill him. I don't slander him. I don't dog him. I don't stab him. Not even in my mind. That's what he's saying right there. You got to cast that imagination down. Amen? Amen? Somebody cut you off on the road, you imagine a high-speed chase <laughs> with no police involved. I mean, you, and then you act on it and just start chasing somebody. You going after them. Not even planning on what you're going to do when they hit their brakes. Because most of the people that have done me like that got by me. When I hit my brakes, they just go on by. Yeah, I thought it wasn't going to be much. Yeah, out of anger, you do that. But you got to take those thoughts captives and not react. This is what's happening in your body. Your heart and your mind just fight. Fight! Because you want to do something to somebody. And you're thinking about it. 
Staying up all night can't sleep because of what a human being did to your feelings. Now let's think about that. Their feelings. Before they did it, you felt fine. After they did it, you felt away. Why not give that to God so he can restore you to the original state that you felt and not allow a person Man, if I reacted to everybody that did something to me, Elder, I wouldn't have time to live. <laughs> Don't react, man, please. Oh, but I ain't letting them get in my chest like that either. Boy, the hand claps getting thin. Somebody's chest is so full of it, they can't get their hands together. <laughs> You don't let folks have that kind of access to you and upset you like that. The devil will keep doing it. If the devil know you can be ticked off easily, he will keep you ticked off. He know you can get in your feelings at the drop of the hat. The hat going to keep dropping. Can I keep preaching in here? No. One of the worst things we can do as believers is to speak intensely to others outside of the situation when we are upset I'm going to let that marinate just for a minute while I go get some water just think about that you talking to somebody intensely like you hot talking to somebody outside of the situation while you're upset So when you're talking to somebody outside the situation while you're upset, you are really trying to get somebody on your side. Yes, if you're trying to get them on your side, you're trying to get them against the person you're talking about. And that's when it becomes sin. It becomes discord. It becomes a sedition. Proverbs 26 and 22. The words of a talent, tell a tale. Tale bearer are as wounds. They hurt when you are tell a tale. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Just a tell a tale. Just the phone is like crack. Keep calling you. You got to just send a text. You got to call somebody and talk. And they're outside of the situation. You and somebody else are getting into it. And you call somebody outside of that situation. You're not supposed to do that. Amen. 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 Can I keep preaching? This causes us to slander, tear down, and harm our brother or sister, and infect others with our issue. Yeah. This is tail-bearing, and God hates it. He lists it in his things that he hates, the seven things. Proverbs 6 and 19, he hates a false witness that speaketh lies. Oh, but it's the truth. Did you see it? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, then, then, then you're a false witness. Yeah. Yeah. Hand claps then and that's what a false witness is. First thing the judge will ask you, were you there? Well, no, well, then you can get up and go. Get up. Call the next witness. But somebody told me, and the person that told me is credible. Then why are you here? Go get them. <laughs> Don't even go get them. It's a false witness that speaketh lies. And he that does what? So a discord among the brethren. Get somebody on their side among the brethren. That's sowing discord. Amen. Amen. Can I preach in here? Amen. I know. I'm, man, you better learn how to tell God about stuff. The Bible is clear about going to the person you have ought against. When? First. First. You go to them first. So many are guilty of this sin and never related to their persistent failure 
health issues, spiritual bondage, and unanswered prayers. You see, all these things happen when you run your mouth against folks. You're going to keep failing? What, God going to bless a, ta- a talebearer? God going to elevate a tattertale? A gossiper? A slanderer? Oh, is God going to do special favors for you? And you can't keep your mouth shut? No. You're going to have persistent failure. Health issues. Spiritual bondage. And this is the big one. You're going to have unanswered prayers because God said don't come praying to me if you got beef with somebody else. He said go get that resolved. Well, I just gave y'all the ghetto ratchet verse interpretation (laughs) beef (laughs) but if you got a problem if you have ought against somebody your prayers aren't being answered man this is a tight message boy man somebody like oh i was coming to your party but shoot (laughs) negro you done read my ate my lunch in front of everybody I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, you will. You coming. <laughs> you going to be all right when this is over. Amen. Yeah, it's tight, but it's right. Look at somebody say, it's tight, but it's right. Some folk need to just shut up. You talk too much. You talk too much. You don't ever shut up. Who saw that? Run them seat. Don, yep. Heard it on the way up here. No, I just uh, That XM radio is something else. It reach way back. But yeah, you just talk too much and you never shut up. That's all I say. You talk about people you don't even know. And you talk about places you never go. That's a whole song. Remember? That's the one they remade. Remember that old song? You talk, you talk too much. Y'all remember that? Y'all, I'm a walking jukebox. I remember all that stuff, but you do. You talk too much. Somebody, PJ, we need a, a, a church version of talk too much and never shut up. But moreover, if thy brother shall trespass, if he does something against you, Go and tell him. Now, who's saying this? Jesus. Matthew 18 and 15. Jesus says, if your brother hurts you, disses you, goes against you, trespasses against you, go and tell him his fault between who? Don't go build a website about it. Go tell him his fault. I don't know we going to obey the Bible or what. You cannot preach in here. Y'all going to let me preach in here? Amen. So he said, go tell him and let it be between who? Don't take nobody to that meeting. You tell them. Between you alone. And if he hear you, you've gained a brother. Amen. But if he don't hear you, then the Bible says you go take somebody with you. Witness. If he don't hear them, then you bring the matter before the council. you can't bring them out before the council if they left the council. When you leave, that means you didn't want it resolved. I will preach this gospel of truth in this place. You know, you know, it's just the truth and that's what I believe. Here he go again. I mean, can't nobody whip his tail like he can. Good gracious. 
Cali beating. He's giving himself a Cali beating. My God. <laughs> Old Goro beating. Somebody don't know what that is. <laughs> the devil loves. Ooh, he loves when we in here acting a fool. He love when somebody is church hurt and going to stop the church from going. They ain't church hurt and they going to call all the members on the road and turn, try to turn everybody against the church because they're against the church. Devil loves that. He loves it. He loves this behavior because it usually causes people to hurt even worse uh-oh, when their anger subsides, when they calm down after you got them all crunk and height and made them make a decision, now their anger subsided and they are left in the painful aftermath of irreversible emotional decisions. Now the hurt has turned to hate. Now it's malice, malicious, destroy, and sometimes kill. Because I'm in a position now that I can't get out of. Proverbs 14 and 17, he that is easily angered dealeth what? Foolishly. And a man of wicked devices is what? Everybody will always end up hating the hater. <laughs> the one who starts it all, everybody go end up hating him. Because you made us make a dumb decision. And it's your fault. No, it's dumb's fault. <laughs> the spirit of dumb. Because if you had went to God and told him about it first. Yeah. But this is tormenting, y'all. This, this causes a person to be constantly tormented. Because the devil loves to keep replaying the event in your mind. So when you do the dumb thing because of the dumb stuff that somebody said or whatever happened, you didn't take it to God, you got beef with somebody, it's, it, you know, and then y'all end up separating, fighting, whatever happened, the devil loves to keep replaying it in your mind so that he can keep hatred in your heart and make it hard for you to truly live for God because of the offense you carry. So he'll keep that offense alive. Every time you think about that person, that offense wakes up. You find yourself in church, can't lift your hands and worship God because you staring somebody down. Yeah. Yeah, you was good on the way up here, greeting everybody before the, the Siri tell you to take your seat or whoever that is. You was doing good. And I mean, as soon as praise and worship start, the devil just grab your head and turn it. There she is. get the glory you get the glory out of this you get the glory you get the glory out of this you get the glory you get the glory out of this forever and ever you going to hell you going to hell you can't sing to the Lord you that mad really somebody You are tormented, man. Because of something somebody said and did. You thinking about it while you getting dressed. Ooh, I hope so. When I get to church, I'm, I'm going to go through the, the, through the visitor side, through the, by the, by the visitor center. I'm going to come around and, 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 and then bust the loop around the fellowship hall. And then I'm going to come around here. And I, I ain't going to use that bathroom because she always standing over there. So I'm going to be around. You doing it? It's church. You done mapped out a whole... Avoidance plan? 
this is church. Man. First John 2 and 11. But he that hateth his brother is in what? Darkness. And walketh in darkness. And don't know where he's going. Because darkness, can't nobody walk in darkness. When the devil hurts you through someone, look at somebody and say, tell God first. Tell God first. Tell God first. Get it to where it's a reflex. Yeah, just I'm, I got to tell God. Before I say anything, before I deal with this, first let me talk to God. Don't call the pastor. Don't call the deacon and the elder. Don't call, amen. Don't call the sewing leader. You're just calling anybody. You got their number and they've been at the church for a while. So maybe they can help me. No, because some of the business you talking against somebody, you're putting something in their heart against that person. So go to God first. Oh, some of y'all make me sick. I'm sorry. I have to let that out. I have to let it out. I will cut it out the message. But I be thinking, what? Ah! Oh, this could have been a... Ah! Speak to him about it before you tell any. So that he can what? See, because the first thing he's going to do is clear your heart of the issue. And then he's going to posture you correctly to go to that person. See, you don't know that person like that. You don't know what they're going through, what they're dealing with, what happened to them, how they grew up. You don't know. So you don't go just pushing strangers' buttons or pushing folks' buttons and you don't have knowledge. of. You need the Holy Spirit to guide you. Somebody, man, they may have a criminal background in beat down. And you just gonna go, oh, so I heard that you said that such and such and such and such. And the Holy Spirit would have gave you a vision of you getting uh, just your teeth everywhere. Teeth out. You had a vision of just teeth out. That's what you saw. The Lord was warning you, man, this dude is crazy. He ain't been saved but eight weeks. That's not the one you go confront. Man, you handle that with an email. <laughs> but you don't know. You don't know. You can make it so much worse. But the Holy Spirit will tell you, well, this person is dealing with this. And he'll show you they, they're actually dealing with this. So what happened, it, it may not have been directed towards you. Or it was directed towards you, but you're more mature than they are. So you're not going to go at them like they would come to you. Man, and get off the internet. Post it. I'm not going to say who it is. But the t get off the internet. Man, people don't like you. And I hate when they do that. What is it? Spoken word or a poem or something implicating somebody, but don't say who it is. Yeah, everybody in church know what happened. And you got a cryptic, crypt, crypto post. Yes, he was a deacon and he <laughs> stupid. That's just so stupid. And then go back and delete it. That's, that's the thing I hate. You done got in your feelings and posted something, and now you're trying to delete it, but everybody screenshot it. Weird. But I deleted it. Don't that mean it goes away? It's the World Wide Web. Oh, 
But go speak to him about it before you tell anyone. And if you're married, sometimes it's good to just run it by your husband or your wife first, too. Yes, Amen. Amen. Especially if you're the wife. If you're the wife, go tell your husband. Because he knows you. So he's going to say, you know, why don't you wait 10 days? About 10 days? Well, let me go look at the calendar. I'll tell you how many days to wait. Amen. He knows your he know your cycle, your menopause, all that. Uh, menopause. Um, won't you wait like two years? About two years. That's what the doctor said. About two years. About two years. We'll deal with this in two years. And then you got to take all that into consideration when you're dealing with people. Amen. Especially women, man, man. Oh, I'm preaching. And the Holy Ghost will remind you of all of that because, I mean, he made all the biology. So he knows. The Holy Ghost will tell you, girl, th this ain't got nothing to do with them. This don't have nothing to do with them. But, Lord, they didn't. you say that about everything. You was mad that the toast didn't taste good yesterday. So, no, this don't have nothing to do. Psalms 51 and 10. Lord, created me a clean heart, O God, and do what? So when you're mad, when you're upset, you go to God and say, God, renew a right spirit. Fix my spirit. Before I go and confront sister so-and-so, renew a right spirit. Where did so-and-so come from? When we was growing up, that was like the analogy every older person used. So-and-so. We didn't want to call nobody names, just the so-and-so. But you go to the Lord and tell him, say, Lord, renew my spirit because I'm mad. And I want to know why I'm mad. Why am I so mad at this person? Are they really this evil? Did what they did really that bad? Or is it something I need to look at in my own heart? You know what God, a lot of times he does, he'll bring up when you talked about somebody in the same situation and now you just paying it back. Ah, preaching here! Okay. Okay. Amen. Summary! Man, this was a blessing to me. Oh, I hope you heard it. Oh, I hope you heard the pastor today. The devil loves to cause people to overreact to things that others do to us. He doesn't want us taking the time to run it by the Holy Ghost. Because the spirit of truth will always what? Ain't no, listen, no one on earth goes before the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, and leaves his presence upset. Amen. Did I just preach? Yeah, if you upset, I know you didn't go to the Holy Ghost. How you gonna get to the Holy Ghost and then leave and you just as mad? That was a ghost. It was a ghost. It was a Somebody scared? <laughs> Stop that, Pastor, please. <laughs> Don't do that no more. <laughs> but, yeah, if you go before the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth will always calm you down. You know why? Because the, the, the Spirit of Truth is going to show you the truth about yourself. And the truth about you will make you stand down. See, you, 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 you be like, oh, yeah, I can't believe she did that. Do she know who I am? Don't she know who I am? Don't she know what I'm dealing with? Don't she know who she dealing with? Don't she know who she dealing with? You get in front of the Holy Ghost, pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. Because 
the Holy Ghost going to show you, you crazy. Look at what I delivered you from. Look what I got you out of. Look at the stupid mistakes you used to make. Look at all the patience I've had with you. Look at all the mercy I've bestowed upon you. Look at all I've done for you. How dare you come in my presence with an issue. That's right. The devil wants us to react in anger. Oh, let me, let me go back because this is good. He doesn't want us taking the time to run it by the Holy Ghost because the spirit of truth will always calm us down and make us check ourselves first. The devil wants us to react in anger. And most importantly, <laughs> suppositions. Mm -hmm. This is your mind. Supposing. He wants us to suppose something and act on things that we are unsure of. <laughs> Not even sure of it. Somebody said that somebody said. <laughs> Devil wants you to act on it. He wants us to react to gossip as well. Who? Why the gospel always look like that? Because they do. Man, you got to get to the point to where you say, you know what? I, I don't really need you telling me that about that. I, I really don't need you to tell me. Oh, well, what? Well, well, I mean, yeah, I just, no, ain't no what. Just, I, don't, I really don't need you to tell me. You know, I love her. I love him. So I just, I, you know, I, I'm in a place where I just don't want to hear that. You know, they're going to go to somebody. Take that old beak. Go to, some, go to get somebody else here. Just a gossip. And they wonder why folk don't like you. You know you get the label of a gossip, gossiper real quick in a church. It don't take long. It don't take years. But he wants us to react to gossip. The comforter of the Holy Ghost can bring us peace before we allow hearsay to damage us. If we would only do what? Consult him for you know what hearsay is hearsay is hearsay you heard it said that You can't react to that Heart beating fast over hearsay That was too easy When the devil hurts you look at somebody and say tell God Take a moment to ask the Lord what is really going on. Oh my goodness. Lord, what's really going on? What is this really about? Like, why am I feeling like this? And, God, and he'll be honest with you and tell you, you know. You're really mad at your husband, but you're taking it out on other people. You're really mad at your wife, but you're taking it out on other women. You're mad at your father, so you're taking it out on authorities. Take a moment and ask the Lord what is really going on. Then do what? See, you, you don't come to God and then leave before you get what you came to him for. Wait for his instructions on how to proceed. You don't come to him and tell him what you're going to do. Look, Lord, I just come to tell you that beat down is imminent. So I just want to let you know when you see me out in the street pulling weave and snatching blouses off. Lord, I'm just letting you know it's going down. So forgive me in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 Because it's on. It's on. It's on. No, you wait for his instructions on how to proceed. But this is what I get all the time. In these instances, I get the comment from people, but what if you don't hear anything or the Lord doesn't respond? Then that means that no action is necessary. No action is necessary. God is like, I'm not responding to that dumb stuff you just said. 
And when it came out, it should have tasted dumb. You should be like, you know what? That's all right. That's all right, Jesus. That's all right, Jesus. Mm. Mm. No. No, I sound stupid. I heard myself. So forgive me, Lord. Uh, let's, let's, let's just let this one go. Yeah, no action is necessary. So what do you do? You keep being a Christian. That's what you do. You just stay saved. Let it go. Oh, you got to stay saved and keep loving, forgiving, and pressing toward the mark of the prize. That's what you do. Just keep going. Just because you got hurt, it doesn't mean that you always need to react. Oh! You don't always have to react. Man, why do you think you have to always react? Every time somebody say something against you, you don't have to say something back. Every time somebody do something against you, you don't have to do something back. Every time somebody acts or accuses you, you don't have to respond. The Bible said don't respond to a fool. That's in Proverbs. You respond to a fool, you're going to be foolish. Amen. So everything don't require it. You'll come back in defense of yourself. Let the Lord defend you sometime. Amen. Man, I'm trying to preach. I hope y'all getting it. But just because you got hurt, it don't mean that you always need to react. And your kids don't always need to see you react. When your kids always see you react, and y'all know how mama is, you know mama a bad mother. <laughs> Yes, we know, and the cops know. And the, the neighbors know, yes, everybody knows that you are, yes. Your picture's up in the post office, yes. Yeah, we know, we know what you're capable of, mama. You've shown us time and time again. You know what I, you know how I get, ooh, you know how the kids just, I, <sighs> kids be embarrassed too. They don't want to go nowhere with mama. Trying to get apart, somebody get in it quick. The kids like, oh lord, here we go. I just put put nine one in the phone and just wait. God damn! Oh how dare! Four hundred years of slavery! How dare! How dare! Oh whoa! Al shot the oh, I, what? I It's a Mexican mama. She's she Mexican. <laughs> Just stupid. Man, that's not a good reputation to have. Oh, don't mess with her. Now she crazy. How you in church and your reputation in church is crazy. Usher scared, eh? I mean, no. Just because you got hurt, it doesn't mean that you always need to react. Scars come with all fights, but meekness is required by all of us to stay in a Christ-like posture. Amen. Finally, Matthew twenty-seven and eleven, Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Are thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, You said it. That's what you said. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered, What? Nothing. Then Pilate then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word. Inasmuch so that the governor did what? <sighs> Think about that. The governor is marveling like, what kind of man is this? 
that won't respond, that won't go off, that won't even defend himself. He marveled because he's used to seeing prisoners go crazy to defend themselves when they are facing death. Jesus didn't defend himself. And we have to learn that from him. You don't have to defend yourself. God knows who you are. And he will handle your enemies. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, when I first started doing the truth, truth behind hip hop, man. They was, I mean, death threats. They started all kind of scandals, rumors, everything. I mean, they wanted me dead. And it wasn't the hip hop guys. Because the ones that I would meet and talk to and different things, or they would make comments about me from Snoop to whoever. And they would all respect what I was doing. Even KRS what would respect what I was doing because I had knowledge and they knew it. It was the church folks. It was the church folks trying to stop me from messing with their music. I mean, in defense of devils in the church. Yeah. And man, now they just, ah, me. Well, they coming to my side now by KRS1. I mean, uh, uh, Kanye West. Because now they really see he crazy. Just like I told you. But all oh, before, oh, you all the, you all the. He's, he's demon possessed, y'all. If you had the Holy Ghost, you'd see that. But yeah, they don't want you messing with their music. They would rather have Kanye half save so they can listen to his beats than you preach against him. But you know, I'm a, hey, <laughs> I'm going to do what God say. Yeah. Amen. Regardless. Regardless. But when I first started and all this stuff happened, that's when that guy told me. Y'all remember me telling that testimony. He told me, he said, young man, drain the pool. He said, if you get caught up fighting the alligators, you will never get down to the drain. God told you to drain the pool, you drain the pool. And that's been my motto since. That's what I live by. I got to do what God says. So that means that when the devil does stuff to me through people, I have to tell God. I can't respond. I can't fight. You can go. I, you don't see me on the internet nowhere debating anybody. I'm not a debater. You know why I don't debate? Because I believe what I'm saying is right. Now, if you gonna come, if you want to come on there and tell me I'm right and you're wrong, oh, we can set that up. <laughs> but I'm a preacher of the gospel. I ain't no need to be trying to debate. And I got biblical evidence of what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't need to be on a round table with a Muslim and a. a, 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 a <laughs> I have to do that. Agnostic and a Gnostic and a, I'm not sitting around a table with that. You can't choose Christ with your head anyway. <laughs> so we can talk all the knowledge we want, but until that conviction hits your heart, you won't know who I'm talking about anyway. You won't believe that the Bible is the inspired, infallible word of God, perfect just like it is. You'll be trying to add stuff to it and take stuff away from it. But sometimes you got to just be quiet and let God handle it. Amen. That's what we're going to pray for right now. And if that's you, you want God to just put a, like he told, he told the rich man and Lazarus. I mean, he told the rich man, he said, there is a great gulf fix between us. 
So I can't go there, you can't come here. Some of y'all want God to put a gulf fix between you and folk so that you can't get to them when you want to get to them. So God can work on your heart before and you can learn that prudence. If that's you, just come on up. I need that prudence so that I don't just immediately defend myself. Issues from your childhood and different things give you a complex where you think people are picking on how you were raised or your, your lack of this or lack of that. And so you may fly off the handle pretty quick. God has to take that and transform that. So you will learn how to talk to him first. Take it before him first. It's not worth it to be walking around angry and hateful and revenge in your heart. Malice and payback in your mind. It's not worth it. Man, you need God to fix that so that you will be calm. Calmed by the Holy Ghost to deal with these situations. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. God is so faithful to give us what we need. I mean, he does it every time. Just faithful. Just faithful. Just faithful. So I want to just be that man, that level of collectedness so that I can be an instrument of righteousness and bless people and not hurt them. Anyone else? Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given us today. We thank you, God, for your truth. God, and we pray right now that your Holy Spirit will stand in the way of our emotions stand in the way of our anger and our lashing out stand in the way of our responses and reactions god help us to talk to you when we're hurt when we feel neglected or feel stepped on or somebody's talking down to us or making us feel inferior or we feel less than father god help us to talk to you so you can remind us that we're a chosen vessel unto you. You can remind us that you wonderfully created us, fearfully made us. Father God, we are special to you. You created us and then put a power in us to make us better than human. God, we thank you for that. Remind us so that we don't look at our upbringing and look at the pain of the past and look at what we don't have and think that someone is making us feel inferior God we are not inferior but we are chosen and set apart by you so remind us of that as we come to you when people hurt us when they shame us when they speak down on us when they slander us whatever they do help us to come to you God so we can be restored in our minds you can fix our spirit and our issues before we confront them if confronting them is even necessary sometimes we just need to hide under your shadow rest under your wing just spend time with you and we'll forget all about what the devil tried to do in the name of Jesus we pray amen amen Amen. Amen. And don't let don't let the devil make you think how you were raised. You grew up in the south side of Chicago or something. You just I you know I'm just a booger about. Don't make me mad. Don't say that stuff about you. That you're a new creation now. So you're gonna handle things differently, and you're gonna always consider yourself first what God did for you first and that'll help you deal with other people amen amen all right hug somebody and tell them I ain't gonna be mad no more come on tell them I'm in control of this and I'm gonna talk to God first hallelujah I'm gonna tell God before I tell them I'm going to tell God before I pick up that phone. I'm going to tell God before I make that post. 
I'm going to tell God before I slide in them DMs. I'm going to tell God before I send that email. Tell him before I hit that send button. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord all about it. Hallelujah.